Starting with a clap. I haven't done that in a long time. I am back, baby. Last week, if you listened to my episode, I was sad. I was a little bit in a rut. I was not feeling 100% myself, and I talked all about it on the episode. So if you haven't listened to it yet, really encourage you to. And I just want to say before I get into anything else that I am so, so appreciative of your guys' feedback and love and support after that episode. It's obviously not easy to put your most vulnerable self on the internet for anyone to criticize or for anyone to interpret it the way that they want. And so when I put last week's episode out, I was very, very nervous that people were going to think of it as like, oh, she just feels bad for herself. She's just complaining. And that was not my intention. And I'm so, so happy that I don't think it came across that way just based on all of the messages and like nice things that I've received over the past week. So if you enjoyed last week's episode or you enjoy any of my episodes, I would absolutely love it if you left me a review. Um, Apple, Spotify, YouTube, drop a comment or subscribe to the channel. However you listen to my podcast, it means so, so much. No matter how small and insignificant it may seem to you, it makes a world difference for me. And it also just kind of encourages me to do more episodes like that. So uh, I wanted to kind of give you some like life updates before I get into today's episode. So number one, Jenna, is the apartment done yet? It's literally been six months since you moved into this place um no it's not so (laughs) so i think next week i will be getting back the mood boards that anthropology put together for me um so if you don't follow me on tiktok you don't know this i am working with anthropology to kind of like redesign my apartment um and i'm really really excited and fortunate for it so i will be sharing that with you when i get it back uh next life update um let's see let's see you guys oh the facebook page okay so the facebook page we now have you know an overview fun on weekdays podcast page we are approaching twenty thousand freaking people are you kidding me Twenty thousand people what that's crazy so if you aren't in the facebook group yet join it there's so many nice girls so many great conversations of people different cities, getting together, hanging out, making new friends, networking, anything and everything that you want basically is like in this group. So join if you haven't. Uh, Let's see. Next life update. Gosh, I don't even know. You know, sometimes I have to like sit here and reflect about my own life because some days it just moves too fast for me to even process what just happened. So I guess the most recent thing was I went on a five-day four night little beach getaway vacay for Valentine's Day. Or I mean, maybe it wasn't for Valentine's Day. Maybe it was just ironic timing, but I went to Tulum and um, it was honestly everything that I needed. I came off of a really like kind of rough week just being super paranoid about being at the beach and in a bikini. And let me just say, I feel very good and refreshed. So today's episode, I'm back 100%. We got some lighthearted, fun conversation. And this is actually what I wanted to talk about last week that I couldn't get myself to stay on topic about. But after being on vacation and solidifying this even more, I wanted to talk about what to do when you move to a place that you just don't like. You don't like the city. You don't like yourself when you're there. You don't feel like it aligns with your values or your interests or like the weather sucks ass. Oh my gosh, you guys, the place that you live has so much to do with your mental stability, I swear. And I really truly never realized that until I went and lived in New uh, New York, in LA for about two and a half months in the past fall. And I realized that I've never talked about my time in LA yet. And I think it's because I wanted to just gather all of my thoughts and put it into a podcast that was like meaningful and you could take something away from it. So that's what I'm kind of doing today. First thing I need to start off with is taking some accountability. (laughs) So about, well, I don't even know how long ago it was, but a few months ago, I did a 24 questions for my 24th birthday. 
and I answered all of y'all's questions, one of them being, Jenna, how do you know when it's time to move to a new city? And I believe my answer to that was, you'll know it's time when you're comfortable in the city that you live in. And gosh, was I fucking wrong. Let me just tell you after living in LA, I was not comfortable there. Well, you know what? I'll get into it in a minute. But I think the reason why I said that was because I just associated comfort with complacency when those two are just entirely, entirely different feelings. And so I, you guys, am a Libra. I'm stubborn. I hate admitting when I'm wrong. But in this instance, I don't think that you need to move to a new city when you feel comfortable in the place that you live. Because comfort can be great. It can be security. It can mean finding your community. It can mean finding where you belong and a routine that you feel your 100% best self in, that it suits you. And you know, kind of like when you wake up every day, what you're gonna do. And whether that routine changes is a different story. I think that's kind of where complacency comes in. Complacent is to me being too comfortable to the fact that you've lived somewhere for maybe a little too long, you're too comfortable with it, you feel like you've seen everything, you've done everything you can in this city, you kind of maxed it out, right? Like I think um, comfort is really great with your career when you're stable and you're growing and, and you are learning more, but you're also progressing in your career. And I think in terms of complacency with your career is like, oh, okay, I've been at this company for X amount of years, I've never gotten a promotion, I've never gotten a raise, but I'm like okay with that. That is maybe complacency to me is just like being okay with not growing, with like not um, trying new things, without putting yourself out of your comfort zone is just that to me is complacent. So I don't think that the two go hand in hand and I was wrong with that. And I think comfort can be really, really great because for me, that is what I needed out of Austin and I have that. And I think it just shows, honestly, when I'm here, my podcast episodes are so much better. I mean, you can go back and listen to my episodes in LA and don't get me wrong. I have some awesome guests that come on. Episodes are still good, but in terms of me, you are your best self when you live somewhere that you're comfortable. Um, So... I wanted to kind of tell my story because I think that throughout our lives, we're going to live in different places, right? Like there's definitely a portion of people that live in their, in their hometown forever. And I just want to say that that is perfectly okay. I had an episode with my dad, um, a few months back and he has lived in Painesville, Ohio, literally forever. He went to my high school. He married my mom who also went to our high school. They went to college like an hour away from our hometown. That is perfectly okay. He still lives his life, honestly, to the fullest. Like you can maximize your life while living in a small town. You don't need to live in a big city. And I think I needed to remind myself that, especially as somebody who lives in Austin, Texas, like obviously there's a lot of opportunities here. It's warm outside. It's very active. Mm -hmm. And I do think in terms of like, the kind of person I am. I'm definitely more adventurous here, but I also loved, loved, loved my life when I was living in a small town in Painesville. All right, guys, something super awesome is February is Black History Month. And as somebody who works with Macy's, I wanted to tell y'all how Macy's is helping give back. And so since signing the 15% pledge, they have more than tripled the number of black owned designers and brands that they carry at Macy's. Macy's is committed to using their purchasing power to influence and represent the black community. Macy's is also proud to be celebrating black creators and visionaries who are helping influence style and culture. Join in supporting black history and black brilliance by shopping black business owned brands. You can also help fund scholarships for students at historically black universities and colleges by donating online or rounding up in store. You can learn more at macy's.com forward slash honors and you can check out my personal landing page at macy's.com forward slash f-o-w. I grew up in Painesville, Ohio. It's about 30 minutes east of Cleveland. If any of my 440 people are out there listening to this, 
The fact that I just said my 440 people, that is so fucking weird. I've never said that in my life. I don't even know where that thought came from. <laughs> if I have any fellow Riverside Beavers out here listening to my podcast, um, I actually do know that there are some people that went to my high school that listened to this. And whenever I think about that, I just try to block it out because I'm like, it is kind of really cringe and a little bit embarrassing. But you know what? That's okay. So... Going back to my thought was, I lived in Paintsville, Ohio. There is like truly not a lot going on. It's a small town. I feel like everybody kind of knows everybody, and especially when your parents went to high school there, um, your parents know everybody. So, you know, your opportunities are definitely limited. But I will say, when I lived there from the time that I was in literally out of the womb (laughs) to the time that I went to college, I never once looked at Painesville and thought like, I hate it here. I need to get out of here. I hate my life because I live in Painesville. I never thought that. And because I was so freaking active, I made the most of the time that I was living there. Like in high school, I was a cheerleader. I was in drama club. Yes, that I am. I am a little drama nerd. I was in the musicals, okay? I never did the plays because I wasn't good at acting. I only liked singing. Anyways, um, I did that. I was in student council. I was just super involved and I had a job after work. I was so busy and so content with my friends that I never once looked at Painesville as a place that was like ridding me of my happiness in any way. And I think another thing too is I look at every single place that I live as I get to live here. I don't have to live here. I mean, until I'm 18 at least, right? Like my parents have me under their wing until I become an adult and I can move on on my own. But I think that's also another key is no one is forcing you to live anywhere. If you don't like where you are, you can pick up and move at any time. And I think for me, especially growing up there, I knew my time in Painesville was limited because I was going to go to college for four years and I was going to get out of my hometown. So why not make the most of those years while I'm there rather than like finding reasons to be miserable and making excuses for my life because of like the city. And I know that that there's literally so much privilege with me being able to say this because I grew up in a town that like I have a really great family and support around me and I am lucky that my family was able to support us. So I know that there are some people out there who aren't necessarily in the same boat as myself. I just wanted to quickly mention that. I know I'm very privileged for that uh, reason. And I know that like your hometown does, or just, I mean, where you live in general does have a lot um, of kind of strength and pull over your your mentality, Um, but only if you allow it to. So the next place that I lived was Kent, Ohio. So I went to Kent State. And it's a small college town. And ever since I went to Kent, I just really never wanted to be there that much, if I'm being honest. I really wanted to go to Ohio State. I loved Columbus, Ohio. Sadly, I didn't get into Ohio State. Um, If you listen to my first podcast episode, I actually talk a little bit about it. But going into my time living at Kent State, I just kind of was going through the motions of going to school. I went to the same, like, maybe five restaurants like I did not branch out in Kent at all and a lot of times people are like would you go back to college if you could and my answer honestly is always no like I enjoy my life post-grad so much more than I did when I was in college but I think a lot of that was because I never really gave the city of Kent like a chance I never went out and explored anything, and that was my own bad. I mean, don't get me wrong, I was involved on campus and I was always busy, but like, I was never really going on walks around Kent. I was never really trying new restaurants or like meeting new people um, outside of, you know, like Greek life Um, (laughs) or like my classes. And so in terms of Kent, I just knew that I wasn't gonna stay there. Like it's a college town. And when I graduate, I'm going to move somewhere different. So 
I just looked at it as temporary and constantly thinking of how can I get out of here? What is my next step? Where am I going to go? Rather than just taking a moment to embrace the time that you are in college, like you guys, you get four years of it. If you're lucky to go to college, might I add, you have four years of it. So like, even if you're not at a school that you necessarily want to be at, and maybe you want to transfer somewhere, okay, then transfer somewhere. But while you still are there, enjoy it to the absolute fullest that you possibly can. Give it a chance. Let your guard down a little bit. I know it's kind of scary. Do something different, even if you think it might be embarrassing to go bowling or go ice skating on campus. Like those are the types of things that you do in a city that they give you like memories to look back on. Because my thing always too is, you know, when I think about different times of my life and different places I've lived, I want to have good core memories that I can think of when I think of those cities. So the next place I moved to was Austin, Texas, and this was the summer after my sophomore year of college. Um, I, it was right after a breakup. Gosh, I promise you this is the last time I talk about the breakup, you guys. But it was the first time that I had been really anywhere else other than my college town or my hometown. And so I kind of felt it as a new opportunity to just literally reinvent myself as whoever I wanted to be. Because that's the great thing about going somewhere new is that people don't know you. People don't have prior experiences with you. They don't have expectations of like who you are. And so you really get to kind of rebrand and rebuild and leave any negativity in the past. And that's exactly what I did in Austin. And I looked at it as like turning a new leaf where I was able to meet new people. I had this like awesome job. I was doing like volunteer stuff with the job and just really getting out of my comfort zone. And I think a lot of that truly is also because Austin had a lot more opportunities to kind of do that. Like there's a lot more hiking, there's a lot more outdoor stuff. Um, But I think truly it was the people that I surrounded myself with that encouraged me to do those things. Because I don't know necessarily if I hadn't found my friends at that internship at Sherry Hill that summer in Austin, that I would have gone out and done those things that made me love Austin. Because it truly is derived by the relationships that you build in these cities that help you have these awesome opportunities and experiences in them. So that was my uh, opportunity there. I also knew I was only there for 10 weeks. And like this was an opportunity of a lifetime. So I'm going to live it up every single freaking night. I remember the first day of our internship, me and Lily, my old roommate, went out that night with our other roommate, Gretchen. And we got hammered. It was like a Monday night. And we showed up to work the next day on a Tuesday, second day of internship like so hungover and I think having the mindset that we were only here for a summer we would we would go and do something every single day after work whether that was going and watching the sunset at Mount Bunnell or 360 bridge or finding some random person's boat that we could go on through Bumble or going to like Bumble events that they would host literally anything and everything we made it like our priority to go and I think that's a thing is why do we why do we only think of the place that we live in as temporary when we have a flight booked out of there? You know? I don't I don't really know where I was going in there, but I think I have like a good I think I have a good idea here. Basically, like I could essentially leave Austin tomorrow. Like Austin could be temporary for me. Painesville could have been temporary for me. Any of these places could be temporary literally all it takes is booking a flight or getting in your car and driving somewhere. So like you don't have to be so negative minded when it comes to thinking about being stuck somewhere because you're only stuck somewhere if you allow yourself to be stuck. Quick note about being stuck, you guys. This is has nothing to do with the episode, but um, growing up, did any of you guys have like an irrational fear of getting stuck <laughs> in quicksand? Because... I just thought that quicksand was going to be a lot more prevalent in my life. I have literally never come across quicksand ever. I don't think I've ever even seen it until I saw a TikTok of somebody in quicksand like yesterday. 
Anyways, okay, back, back to what I was talking about. So after that summer, I go back to Kent. I'm only there for the fall uh, semester. I was working. I was doing stuff for the sorority. I was just kind of, you know, going through the motions. In the spring, I did an internship in New York City where I had to live in New York for five months, and I was taking full-time classes while also doing an unpaid internship. Oh, my God. Speaking of the unpaid internship, I have to talk about this right now. I worked at Love Shack Fancy in college, and I got an email from Love Shack Fancy inviting me as a guest, as a quote unquote influencer to Rebecca Cohen's 40th birthday party. Rebecca is the founder. And on my last day of the internship, she called me Jessica. And that's why I was like so pissed off at this internship because I was like, they don't even know my name. I've been here for months. I'm not even getting paid. And I'm like doing so much for you guys, like really? So I was flabbergasted when I get this email getting invited. I was low-key kind of like annoyed. I was like, "Mm, I don't know if this is my full circle moment where I'm like, I should be proud of myself or if I should just be like, fuck you guys to them. But then I thought about it and I'm like, "Mm, the girl who invited me is probably another unpaid intern who's sitting down making this list, thinking of TikTokers she follows. She's like, oh, I'm going to add Jenna. Probably had no idea that I worked there. So I would have gone, but I couldn't go because I was in Tulum this past weekend. And if you guys have seen the videos of this like huge pink gala in the in the Plaza Hotel in New York City this past weekend, that's what it was. That's what I got invited to. I thought it was going to be this like intimate dinner. It was not. It was not at all. It was like this giant extravagant like tea party on steroids. So anyways, that's where I worked when I was in New York City. And I didn't necessarily like the internship. And so I think because I didn't love the campus, I didn't love my apartment, I didn't love my internship, I ruled out New York City completely. Because all of my experiences were kind of negative. So I just have a negative association with New York City, not because the city itself I I don't like, but because of my own experience. So I was living in a uh, Airbnb at the time with three other girls. There were two bedrooms and two girls to one bedroom. My bed was literally 12 inches a foot, if you're going to compare it, you know, like conversions here a foot away from the girl that I was living with and we weren't really friends um and she would stay up all night like smoking her little vape and tip tapping away on her phone with her long nails and so like the living experience I didn't love it so every time I would come back to my apartment I'd be like oh I hate it here and I lived in this misery for like five months just complaining about New York City and how much I hated it and I didn't want to live there and I look back at that part of my life now and I realize like I was in a really bad place mentally as well because I let that thought consume me and I blamed it all on the city itself not actually just my mindset of living there because if I would have thought about New York City as like oh my god I am newly 21 years old I'm living in the biggest city in the United States. I'm studying at one of the top fashion schools. I get to do literally anything. The world is my oyster right now for the next five months. If I would have lived in that mindset that I lived in when I was in Austin, Texas, I can almost guarantee you that I would have loved New York just the same if I would have given it a chance. So that's the thing too, is you have to give these places a chance because even if you don't like it off the bat, you can eventually fall in love with it if you just change your mindset a little bit or meet the right people that help you change that mindset. So the next place that I went after that was I moved to Austin, Texas for after I graduated college. Um, I moved here officially in July of 2020. I started working remote when I was working at TikTok corporate. And for a year, I was working there going through the motions Um, you know, I kind of started this mindset of like, well, I don't like my corporate job and it's over every day at five. So why not enjoy my life outside of that? And I knew I loved the city of Austin. So that's kind of like 
why I stayed here and that's why I justified never leaving my job and trying to find you know like a new opportunity so it wasn't until I eventually quit my job um, that I started doing like the podcast and social media full time that I thought maybe in my mind like is it my time to leave Austin because I thought I'm too comfortable in Austin now like I've lived here for the for two summers and now a whole entire year and I'm starting this new chapter of my life where I'm doing podcasts and doing social media there's not a whole lot of people in this city that like relate to that and maybe I've outgrown Austin you know like I have been here for a little while and I started thinking that and it started getting in my mind and people would constantly ask me like where are you gonna live in five years or What do you want to do? Are you going to stay in Austin forever? Can't even tell you how many times people ask me, are you going to stay in Austin? Guys, I don't know. Like I said, everything is temporary. Tomorrow I could be in Paris. I mean, probably not tomorrow because I think it's a really long flight. But you know what I mean. I could up and move any day. So that was kind of my mindset. And for that reason, when Connor and Mike were like, hey, we're going to go to LA for a couple of months. You should come with us. Try it out. We'll all live together. It'll be super fun. You can live around people who are kind of in a similar field of work as you. There's a lot of podcasts out there. There's a lot of opportunities. And I had my mind fixated like on the idea that maybe LA was going to be the next place that I moved. And so I went to LA and I had it in my mind like, okay, maybe I'm going to move here after this. But then at the same time, when I said that I was going there, I got a lot of negativity pushback. And when I say a lot, it really wasn't a lot. Maybe like 20 to 30 comments saying like, oh, she's just another influencer moving to LA. You know, she's just like everyone else. The reason why I liked her was because she lived in Austin. And for so long, I felt like my identity was Austin. And if you took me out of Austin, people weren't going to like me anymore. So when I was living in LA, that was definitely a huge, huge thought in my mind was like, I do like it here, but I don't want to like it here because I don't think people want me to live here. And are they still going to like me if I did live here? You know? And then I'm like, that's fucking stupid. What do I care? It's literally just a geographical coordinate, coordination, coordinate. Geographical coordinate, like who cares where you live? I'm still the same person. I still have the same values. I'm still doing the same work. I'm still the same person. Um, So when I was living there, one thing I realized was LA is just so freaking big that there's so much to do that you almost just don't do anything. And I think that's similar for a lot of big cities. For anybody who moves somewhere new, you get very overwhelmed that you're like, I don't, I don't even know what to do. And so then you just make excuses that you're like, it's too hard to find something, you know? And for that reason, sometimes I think that living in a small town is easier because you are kind of limited, that you don't have many options and it's easier to decide what you're going to do. And so I found myself a lot of days in LA that I would sit at home. We stayed in this little bungalow in Venice which Venice is beautiful. I love the area. We were super close to the beach. We thought we were going to utilize the beach a lot more, but it was pretty cold when we were there. Um, And just in general, I didn't have a car when we lived there. Connor had a car, so us three shared it, which over time, it got kind of hard. I felt, you know, kind of guilty to ask if I could use it, or I would get invited to go and do things, and I couldn't go because I didn't have a car to get there. Or everything in LA is just pretty far away honestly like I got invited to some events that were 45 minutes and I'm not gonna take a hundred dollar uber there and back like LA was very expensive and just over the time that I was living there I realized the reason why I was staying was because I loved living with them and I had so much fun hanging out with them and it was really great that like we could all sit down and make dinner together or watch tv together and just have fun doing that Sorry for the background noise. So my, honestly, memories of LA are not of the city at all. It's of the people, which just brings me right back to the fact that like you can have a good experience in a city or in a small town or literally anywhere you live if you have the right people around you. 
And that is the number one key to falling in love with where you live. This is going to be a kind of short episode, you guys. Yeah, this will be a quick little listen for you. Because you know what the thing is? I don't think, just as I've said in so many other episodes, there is not a single key that I can give you of how to live in a place that you don't enjoy because it truly is all 100% mindset. And it's all about maximizing the time that you are living in this place because you could leave tomorrow. But one thing that I like to say is be a tourist in your own city. There is absolutely nothing embarrassing about going and doing touristy things. I know a lot of girls that listen to my podcast live in Nashville, New York, Chicago, Dallas, uh, LA, Austin, a lot of these like big cities. And so when you live in a city like that and there's a lot of like well-known things to do that are kind of touristy, you might think it's embarrassing to go and do that. When in reality, like you aren't judging anybody else who's doing the touristy things, right? Like. I never once have walked down the streets of Austin and laughed at somebody on one of those little bicycles that does like the drinking. I've never laughed at that. That's kind of like a touristy thing to do here. But I've never thought like, that's embarrassing. So why do I think it's embarrassing for myself? It's not. It's like, it's just all in your head. So I really, really encourage you to literally be a tourist in your city and treat your city like it's a vacation. It might not be the most glamorous vacation. It might not be a five-star hotel. You might have a cranky roommate, but you know what? Life is all about having memories and experiences that you can share and take with you along this journey of life. And it's all about like just living in the moment of this place that you're at because it doesn't have to be permanent if you don't make it permanent. So some reasons that I came up with maybe why you don't like the place that you live. Okay, number one, maybe you moved somewhere for a significant other and not yourself. So maybe your life is kind of revolved around another person and you haven't been putting yourself first in order to get the experience out of where you're at that you want. You're living a life that somebody else wants and that is like a huge key to not liking where you live. So if you're gonna move, for your significant other, know that it is also for you. Like make the decision, if you wanna do it, great. And if they also want you to, that's an added bonus, but don't do it just for them. Unless of course, like maybe you're married or there's like other circumstances involved. Another thing is maybe you just haven't found the friends that feel like your family yet. And this is what I've said the entire podcast is that the people around you are what truly makes Um, a home and especially if you're moving away from your family you need to kind of find your own family within this new place that you're living because that's what makes a city feel like a home the next thing is maybe you don't have any extracurriculars outside of work or school you guys in high school I did so many extracurriculars so I think about it as an adult Like everybody looks back on high school and college as these amazing times of our lives when we were so happy and so fun. And I think a lot of that is because we got to do all of these fun things after work. I mean, sorry, after school, which at that time in our lives, it kind of was work. So like join an intramural league, join a book club, um, join like a fitness group. There are some like extracurricular type routine things that you can do that'll give you something to look forward to every week or maybe once a month. And building that community there too also will help you kind of find your place in the city. The next one is maybe you don't identify with like the political or religious views of where you're living. Maybe that causes a lot of of tension. Maybe it makes you feel like you're living in a space that doesn't align with who you are and who you want to be. I can promise you if you can't find that community in person, um, I promise one day you will find it in person but until then you can always find that community online there are so many facebook groups there are so many people on social media that you can find and you can kind of create that online community and then maybe who knows you'll meet awesome people you'll go on a trip together or maybe you'll move to a new city and i think that you know there's nothing wrong with building an online community either because i've kind of done that too You know, because I know that no matter where I go, 
I can kind of go on my phone or I can go on Facebook or I can type in a group me and I can find people wherever I'm located that have similar values as me. The last one is maybe your career is limited in where you live and I totally get that. I went to school for fashion. There's not a lot of opportunities in Painesville, Ohio. Um, There's also not really a lot of opportunities in Cleveland. I think one of the blessings in disguise, is that that what you call it, Um, is the fact that because of COVID, there are a lot more remote opportunities now. And so if you can work from home, you can work from your computer and you have that ability to kind of travel. My sister did this, go and listen to the episode that I talked to her about, but she was working remote and she's been kind of in this place where she doesn't feel like Lakewood, Ohio aligns with who she is anymore, that she wants to leave, but she doesn't know where. So she took some time, a couple weeks in different cities and just stayed at Airbnbs or stayed with friends, met new people and just tested it out. Like that is such a great way to kind of figure out where you can see yourself being. And, you know, just thinking about like your career is not the only important thing about your life. Like, yeah, of course your career gives you money to be able to live your life, but there's so many more important things in your career. And so you don't need to stay in a city just because of the job that you currently have because there is one waiting for you out there. Uh, I do know also, you guys, weather has such a huge impact. Oh my God, it's painful. Like now that I live in Texas, I'm so used to the heat that when I go up north or I went to New York a couple weeks ago, it gets so dark so early. It gets so cold. It's so easy to hate where you live because of the weather. And so my only advice for that is to find like indoor activities that you can do instead. Like bowling, ice skating, arcades, maybe go to like a water park. I don't even know. And I know all of those things like cost money but it also doesn't need to cost money either like you can get together with people in your apartment complex you can have a game night you can do a karaoke night you can have your friends over for dinner like there are other ways that you can still kind of make time fun even when the weather sucks it sucks but you know what the weather does not dictate a happy life the last thing that i want to leave you guys on is you have so much perspective of your life when you leave a place and you come back to it after a while. And sometimes that's necessary. Because for me, I thought that I outgrew Austin. And then I went to LA. I realized LA just, it wasn't for me. It's not what I want for my future. I loved i loved it there, but it's just not me. And I didn't feel comfortable there. And so I couldn't be 100% me there. When I came back to Austin after that time, I noticed so many places that I have never seen before. Restaurants, bars, little parks little things to do like it is crazy how much more you recognize when you don't live there Um, and you just have a way larger appreciation so if maybe you're kind of thinking like oh it's time to get out okay get out get out temporarily leave come back reassess and if you want to leave leave no one's keeping you there so those are kind of my tips my key advice for you I suppose Um, is just thinking of everything as temporary because that is the best way to make the most and to live in the moment. So I don't know if any of you guys out there are thinking about moving to Austin. Obviously, I highly recommend it. I love it here. Um, The cost of living is going up. There's more and more people coming here, um, which is great, but also kind of sucks, you know, at the same time. It's like you want people to move to the city that you love, but you also don't because like, I don't know how how much longer I'm going to be able to afford my apartment, if that's so. Um, but yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. Definitely a little bit more upbeat. And I, uh, I guess I'll talk to you guys. Oh, wait. Oh, my God. I was about to end my episode without telling you something fun to do this week. All right. My idea is to walk down a road that you've never been down or maybe drive down it. Okay. Maybe you shouldn't walk alone. That is so sad, right? Like, The fact that we can't walk alone as women. All right. Drive down a road you've never been on or stop at a coffee shop that you've never noticed or maybe like an antique shop on the side of the road. Maybe go to a garage sale. Um, Literally just do something that you have never done in your city before. Don't Don't go out to eat at a restaurant that you've already been to. Don't go to a gym that you've already been to. Just go somewhere new. Okay? 
And that's it. Oh, oh, and Instagram about it. Like, make a story about it as if, like, you're visiting your town. <laughs> like, I think it's kind of ironic if you just act like you're, like, you know, on vacation in your town. I don't know. I think it's funny. Other people probably won't. But anyways, that's all I have for you guys this week. I will talk to you next Tuesday. Bye, guys.